Your Humanities Half Hour is brought to you by the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Welcome to Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Catherine Perry. What's your favorite thing to do on the weekend or after work? Maybe go to the beach, go hiking. Well, there's an opportunity for you to become involved in creating more outdoor recreational spaces in the Marianas. And joining us today to talk about the CNMI Statewide Comprehensive Outdoor Recreation Plan. That's a mouthful. There is an acronym. It's my pleasure to welcome Project Manager Craig Pereira of Horsley Witten Group and also Becky Skeel Jordan of COA Consulting, um, both working um, with the CNMI government on C- CNMI SCORP, correct? Correct. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to the show, guys. Thanks for making time to come and share with us what this project is all about. Um, so tell us, for those um that, or to give us a better idea of what we're talking about um, before we get into the details, when we talk, say outdoor recreation, what are some of the things we're talking about? So outdoor recreation, uh, it's going to vary. It's uh, both passive recreation and active recreation. So it could be a park where there are benches where people can just sit and enjoy nature or a view or a scenic overlook. But it's also active recreation, such as a basketball court or tennis courts or trail systems, biking systems. Um, so it really means a lot of things to a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of different things to a lot of people. So if you've ever felt like, man, I wish I w- wish we had a basketball court closer to my house, or I wish I could just take a short walk and and have a place to relax and uh, you know take take a breather. Um, this project wants to hear your opinion. Um, what is the purpose of the CNMI SCORP? So the purpose of the CNMI SCORP is to develop a plan that has a number of components that are required uh, through the Land and Water Conservation Fund and the National Park Service. Uh, the first component is um, public participation and engagement. Um, there's also uh, developing a database or an inventory of existing open space and recreation amenities. There's an implementation plan which sets the vision, the goals, the st- and the policy statements and action items to achieve that vision. Um, there's a wetlands priority uh, component as well. Um, and then there's an open project selection process. So the CNMI, once this plan is, is developed and approved, CNMI will then be eligible to um, work through the National Park Service and Land and Water Conservation Fund to identify what their apportionment would be to be able to put towards open space and recreation. And then CNMI would then put uh, uh, a notice out to the communities, to the islands, um, that there is money available for project applications. And typically those applications fall into two different categories. It could be um, open space acquisition and it could be recreational facilities. So there are different ways that the CNMI can set that up. Um, they can either have uh, community-wide uh, project applications or they can have uh, village-specific applications. So we're not quite at that point yet because this is the first plan, the first score plan for CNMI. So we're, we're initiating the entire plan from beginning to end. So this is a great time for people to get acquainted with the plan, how it works, and to get their ideas in since, as you mentioned, um, you're just starting. And it's great that there's funding um, available, federal funding, that will help um, bring this plan into fruition. Can you give us a better idea of who are your local partners and how your um, companies came to be involved in the development of the plan? COA Consulting is a Saipan-based company, uh, environmental consulting company. Um, and we uh, were really interested in this plan when it went out from the Office of Grants Management. They have a specific grant from the Department of Interior um, for the purpose of developing the SCORP. Um, and so when that um, project became available, we reached out to Horsley Witten because Horsley Witten has been involved in other SCORPs in other places around the country, um, which I'm sure Craig can talk about. <laughs> um, 
And uh, yeah, so it's the, um, the money came from Department of Interior, but it's through the Office of Grants Management under the Office of the Governor. And our advisory committee is made up of people from the Office of Grants Management, the um, Department of Lands and Natural Resources, um, specifically the Parks and Rec Department, and then also um, the Department of uh, uh, Office of Planning and Development, OPD. Um, and then we're also working closely with the mayors from the, the four different jurisdictions. So you've just completed a series of public uh, meetings to allow people to have input. Um, what's next uh, now that you've started to get a uh, public feedback? Okay, so we're, you know the 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 backbone of the framework of the SCORP is really about public participation and public engagement. It really should be a plan developed for and by residents. Um, and so now that we've you know we've had these public workshops. Uh, folks are continuing to go to our project website, which is uh, cnmi-scorp, S-C-O-R-P dot com. Um, also going to our Facebook page. Which is CNMI Scorp. Um, just look that up, and it has lots of likes, so hopefully it'll pop up pretty easily. <laughs> and we know that half of our listeners are on Facebook at this very moment, so uh, <laughs> CNMI Scorp, search it so that you can have your input. But we're also going to continue to do our site assessment. So part of our part of our charge for the SCORP is, and a requirement of the SCORP is to develop a database of existing open space and recreation facilities. And so what we've done is we have um, utilized our advisory committee and some existing plans, reports, and studies to develop this draft inventory. And we've we've vetted that with our advisory committee over a number of coordination calls, as well as our our first meeting on island for the Horsey Witten Group on Thursday. Um, so what we're doing with that is is um, we're going to each of these sites and we're looking at historic and cultural sites. We're looking at uh, uh, beaches, public parks, and then recreation facilities. So there's four different categories that we're evaluating. Um, and we are geolocating on an iPad so that we have the location down. But then we're doing an evaluation where we're looking at if it's a basketball court, we're identifying how many courts there are, what the support amenities are, are there, um, are there bleaches, are there lights, what's the condition of the courts, um, is there ADA access to the courts, um, is there parking, is there ADA parking, um, you know, we're looking at the beaches and we're looking at volleyball courts on the beaches to find out if there are other amenities associated with that, whether there are restrooms. Um, again, if every site that we look at, we're looking at ADA accessibility as well. Um, some of the historic and cultural sites, we're looking to see if there are uh, covered shelters or picnic areas, um, restrooms, and other types of facilities like that. Um, so there's a we have a you know on the, on the three different islands we have, I think there's about 100 and maybe 40 or 50 sites that we're looking at in total. Uh, and once we have that that database developed. Uh, we're gonna. That's through uh, GIS, which is Geographical Information Systems, and it's an electronic platform where we're geolocating, and then we can build that out so that all the information that we're collecting will be on that one specific point on the shape file, and the CNMI will be able to utilize that database to expand and, and continue to add to that as new recreation facilities are either built or obtained. All right. So our guests today are speaking about the CNMI Statewide Comprehensive Outdoor Recreation Plan. Um, they want to hear what it is you would like for your community, and you can um, contact them on Facebook at CNMI SCORP or the website CNMI-SCORP, S-C-O-R-P dot com. And we'll be back with more after this break. Did you know that you can donate up to $5,000 to the Humanities Council through the CNMI Education Tax Credit Program? Donations from individuals and corporations qualify and can be used to offset your local wage and salary tax, BGRT, and earnings tax. Call our office at 235-4785 to see how you can support humanities programs in our community and obtain a tax credit for your donation. Sizu Usma'asi, Olomai, and thank you. Welcome back to Your Humanities Half Hour. Um, Craig, you, you worked um, on similar projects in other jurisdictions. What is the importance of having outdoor recreational space to a to the well-being of a community? Sure. Well, I, you know, I think that there are multiple layers to that. I think, first and foremost, 
for the residents of the community, uh, it's really important um, to be able to have these amenities. You, you know, not everybody has the same ability or capacity to provide uh, outdoor recreation facilities or access to uh, specific, uh, such as a public beach or swimming or fishing or boating and things like that. So, you know, I think that um, having these public amenities that are readily available and, and accessible to folks is really important. I think the other piece of that is uh, public health. You know, we're seeing a lot more of an intersection of public health and planning these days now, and especially in the work that we do in and typically in New England. Um, and folks are, are starting to realize, municipalities, cities and towns and states are starting to realize that it's not just about the residents and not just about economic development and the tourism economy. It's also about the, the health and well-being of, its, of their community members. Um, so public health is really starting to play a, a, huge, a huge role in outdoor um, recreation and open space. And I think that that's a trend that's going to continue, that we're going to see continue on. Um, and there's a lot of other funding mechanisms that can kind of tie into that as well. So, you know, open space and recreation starts that discussion, but then it also kind of leads into all these other things. And you've got a lot of uh, public health uh, facilities, hospitals, and and local medical centers who are, and not a lot of people realize, they're responsible for contributing or finding a cause in their community centered around public health and physical activity. So there are a lot of benefits that, that communities don't necessarily realize until they actually start getting into the whole open space and recreation and public health area. I remember um, growing up here as a kid, like walking any place was, was not really common and in fact people would normally stop and ask you what was wrong and did you need a ride and why were you walking <laughs> any place and and it's been such a transition you now you know you see people using the Saipan Beach pathway uh, every day every night and so um, definitely uh, there has been a change in in the local community and concern for public health and then there's also the aspect of other assets that we have um, Becky, you have some experience with that? Yeah, so, I mean, also CNMI is uh, really unique in that it has a really rich uh, cultural and historical component to the, a lot of the sites. Um, so between a lot of ancient Chamorro sites as well as World War II sites um, and a lot of our recreational facilities um, are kind of built around those sites, um, whether they're tourist attractions or just places where residents can go and, um, you know, contemplate the, the site or enjoy you know a peaceful relaxing sunset or um, anything like that so it's we're trying to incorporate that into the scorp as well do you see any tie-in between the implementation of this plan and tourism absolutely and you know part of our part of our role before we came out um, was to uh, look at existing plans reports and studies that have already been done and so we've we've looked at the Saipan um, Lagoon Land Use Plan. Uh, we've looked, the Parks and Recreation Department has developed a five-year strategic plan. Um, almost, you know, it's like a, a mini version of a SCORP where they have identified what their, uh, what their prior primary issues are and what their outdoor recreation opportunities um, might be. Um, we've looked at the, I think there are several uh, Mariana Visitors Authority documents that have been done as far as tourism and what folks are looking for who are coming in because, you know, <clears throat> open space and recreation also translates in, in economic development and, and that's also a critical component of community planning and community development as well. So, um, you know, there seems to be a little bit more of a... Um, uh, collaboration, uh, a welcoming of collaboration between the Visitors Authority and Open Space and Recreation and Parks and Recreation Department. Um, so it seems like everybody's sort of evolving towards the same common goal, which only really makes for a better score uh, process and plan. So um, again, if people are interested, they can contact you on Facebook, CNMI S Corp. And as you said, it's the um, you're really looking for the input of the community on what they would um, like to see come out in the plan. What happens um, if you could share an example of communities where they neglect this kind of planning? What happens when there isn't sufficient planning for these types of facilities? So I think that there's a lot of implications to that. I think first and foremost, 
you want to be able to to generate excitement about your community and you want people to come to your community you want new people to move in you want young families to be able to to, to move in and stay and invest in the community you want um, older folks or senior citizens to be able to stay in their community and age in place um, so you know I think open space and recreation is what kind of brings people in um, it's also a critical component of the economic development and the sustainability of the community as well um, you know I do think that uh, people when you're looking to move or you're looking to relocate, you, one of the things that you do is you look to see like what types of amenities and services are available because you know, you do want to make sure that you go somewhere where you're going to be able to enjoy where you are. Uh, you're going to have a variety of different uh, activities to do, but you're also going to want to have, uh, if you're a community planner and you're looking at having a sustainable, holistic approach to community planning, you're going to want to have a range of demographics living in your, in your community because, you know, like I said, people, seniors want to be able to age in place. So, you know, the people who have been here for 30, 40 years, they don't want to have to be pushed out um, or go elsewhere so that they can enjoy their golden years. Um, you want families that can be that can be together and, and are able to do things together at multi-generational too. There's a lot of um, seniors who typically, and this is the thing that we look, we see the most in, in back in, um, in New England is a lot of seniors, um, one of their primary issues is that they become isolated. And open space and recreation is one way to get people out and to get people engaged. And it's really about the connectivity with other people. Um, and open space and recreation is a great venue to, to be able to achieve that. Understanding that this is your first visit to the Marianas and yes, you've only is. been here uh, a few days, what are your initial impressions about um, what are the opportunities here and what might be some of the challenges? I think some of the opportunities. I think there's a. I think there's a lot of great framework in place already. You have a lot of uh, uh, pathways and trail systems. You have a really huge diversity of sites. Um, you know, I think just in general, it's the 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 vibe and the culture of the community. Uh, we've been really welcomed here by all of the different associations, by the government. Um, asking us to come in and meet with them. And then once we meet with them and talk to them a little bit about the score process, wanting to come back and, and can we put somebody on your advisory committee? We want to be in tune. We want to be in touch with that. So folks are really engaged in on-site planning. We haven't been to Tinian and Rhoda yet, but we, you know, we're hoping to hear it the same when we go there as well. Um, and I think some of the challenges, you know, obviously – uh, the typhoon was a significant issue and, and impacted a lot of the, um, some not a lot, but some of the open space and recreation sites. Um, and, you know, where with climate change, where it's, things are, you know, projected to be only to get a little bit worse. So, you know, where we're taking that into consideration and in some of the conversations that we've had with people, that's one of the things that they're bringing up as far as, you know, I think some of the considerations when CNMI does have a SCORP in place and you do have your open project selection process in place is how do you want to how do you want to manage that application process and you want to make sure that you're using you know you might be wanting to require sustainable materials and, and things like that so that you can invest in your outdoor um, recreation amenities and open space but that things that are going to be able to survive and, 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 and outlast a significant weather events so I think that that's a little bit of both. The nice thing about the uh, CNMI score is because it's an insular area, uh, you are you have 100% funding and you don't have a 50% match. So typically, other communities or states have a match requirement for that. Um, so you know that's a really nice feature here. So um, you know we met with uh, Mayor Apatang uh, yesterday, um, who graciously welcomed us and asked if we could have, you know, if we could include one of his staff uh, people on our advisory committee. Um, but, you know, but one of the first things he talked about was the pathway, mm -hmm. um, the shoreline pathway. And it's amazing what we've seen is the number of people that are using outdoor recreation facilities and open space facilities is just incredible. And even, you know, morning, noon, and night people are out and about and they're, they're utilizing these sites. And that's one of the things that's really nice to see. You know, typically, you you don't see if a community is rich in in, in recreation amenities and facilities, 
everybody's out using these, you know, first thing in the morning, um, right down to at night. And, you know, sometimes it becomes, especially with some of the damage that's along the shoreline path, the lighting is out, um, you know, so that might encourage a safety issue. So there are things that can be done through the score process and through this application process that could improve some of these existing uh, facilities. Well, it helps that you that we live in the tropics, so like we can be out any day of the year, any Absolutely. time of the any time of the day. Becky, what is it you hope uh, being a resident here, this uh, plan will accomplish? Um, well, I I mean I have two kids, and I um, I love to be able to go to beaches with them, or to go to park facilities, or. Um, um, one of them is really into baseball right now, so for him to be able to use the baseball facilities, I really hope that out of this process we can um, really focus on building these community centers. And um, one of the things that I personally, as someone who's not from Saipan but who's lived here for a while, one of the things that I really love about Saipan is the focus on community that this um, island has. And outdoor recreation spaces are one of the ways that that comes to light. Um, so I really hope that we're able to um, draw attention to these facilities and how important they are, and then also get some more funding for them. So so at this point, just to recap what you shared earlier in the show about the process, mm -hmm. uh, you're getting in point, input, doing site inventories to kind of come up with the vision and the goal, then identify activities, and then um, there'll be an opportunity, if I understood you correctly, for different um, agencies or organizations to apply for funding to implement parts of yes. the plan? Yes, so once we have um, a final plan submitted and approved, um, it's the, there's a five-year planning horizon with a, with a current or approved score. So within those five years, on an annual basis, the, the, the various municipal officials will be able to send out a notice of funding av availability. Um, and again, that's typically on an annual basis. It can either be annual or a semi uh, biannual process. It depends on how CNMI wants to do that. Um, utilize on how to distribute and utilize the land and water conservation funds distribution of, 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 of money. Um, so uh, with that, once we have the plan in place and it's approved, there will be an announcement that goes out and p folks will be able to put in applications uh, either for open space acquisi acquisition. Now, what do you mean by that? I, I know you mentioned that earlier, and I wanted to ask for the application process. No, the open space acquisition. So the open sp open because it sounds like buying land to me, and maybe that's not what you mean. Open project <laughs> selection process. So what that is is that you will have to um, either either you know the the various community officials will be able to, based on the guidelines that are outlined in the score, will be able to submit an application to, um, for the Land and Water Conservation Fund through the Office of Grants Management. And if you wanted to say you didn't have a public park in your, in your, in your village and you wanted to be able to have a public park that had, you know, it could have a, a splash pad, it could have a basketball court or tennis courts, or, or it could just be a passive area where there are just benches for quiet contemplation or enjoyment of nature. Um, you would have to make sure that your grant application that you submit was aligned with the goals and objectives that are identified in the SCORP. So that's, the, that's, the, that's where it's really critical that right now we're identifying what the gaps in services and amenities are. We're identifying what the future trends are going to be we're identifying what the needs of the community are. So from that, uh, we will work with the advisory committee to figure out, to identify what the goals are, what the policies, and what the actions are to, are going to be to meet those. So anybody who submits an application, it will have to be in, aligned with the existing goals, policies, and actions in the score. And you'll have to be able to physically call those out um, in your application. And then... You know, as part of the open project selection process, there's going to be a criteria ranking so that CNMI officials can score those applications that come in for open space acquisition or for new recreation facilities. And through that criteria, they'll be able to figure out which applications rise to the top because they meet the most needs that are identified in your score. In the plan. Um, the people or organizations that can apply f uh, for grants. Are, does it have to be a? Would it have to be a government agency, or could it be like a nonprofit? 
It could be it's it, it, the 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 end all be all has to be it has to be a public public land that is readily available either for acquisition or for development and for for use in perpetuity by the general public. So that makes sense. Yes. W- that's where you want to invest your money. Right. Yeah. But you know the other thing too, and I, I think I mentioned it earlier, is that you know we've. We've only been here for a couple of days, and we've been graciously welcomed, and it's been fantastic. And having opportunities such as this one to get the word about the process and to get people to provide input. Last night we met with um, the Northern Mariana Sports Association. Yep. Yeah, so um, you know we and their and their members. They had a member meeting, and we were able to meet with all of them. And that's that's exact. It's a perfect example of getting the word out. Last, you know, like we didn't pre-schedule that having Becky and her husband on island as our on island experts has been great because they know everybody they have connections with everybody um it's really been a great situation because we were you know such as this one we got an invite two days later we're here talking and it's just a great way to get the word out and to get people to come and going to the meeting last night you know they gave us 15 minutes at the beginning of their meeting and you know, to be able to, to get our Facebook page out, to get our project web page out, and then to get our public workshops out and have folks come to those meetings. And, and that's really what the SCORP is all about. It's that public engagement piece. And if we can't do it in person, one-on-one, face-to-face, then we can, you know, we, that's why we have the project website and that's why we have the Facebook page so that you can continue to keep giving us an information and input because, again, the SCORP is really, a, it's, it's, it's supposed to be a living document. It's got a five-year planning horizon. It'll need to be updated once it's approved um, every five years in order to be to remain eligible for the funding mechanism through the Land and Water Conservation Fund. Um, but, you know, starting this process right now and getting that first SCORP developed, um, you know, that's the first hurdle to get through. And, and as, soon as, as soon as CNMI has that, the update is not such a significant undertaking. So I would like to reiterate and plug our Facebook page. Um, and we, on the Facebook page, at the very top of our feed, is a link to our survey, which is online. Um, it has a map component, so you can drop pins on um, areas that you're concerned about or areas that maybe you want to see um, have better outdoor recreation places. Um, and it has a series of questions, and we really we need as many people as possible to answer that survey. So even if people were not, not able to come to the public meetings, um, this survey will be open until I think the end of September. Right. And so you've got you know over a month now to uh, go to the survey, answer the questions, tell your friends and family, get as many people to provide feedback because it's that feedback that allows your voices to be heard and then allows this process to be um, driven by the people. And it's really kind of like building your future yes, or building your future neighborhood. What you would like to see now is your opportunity mm-hmm. to to have a say. Um, any final thoughts before we go? I just uh, thank you for the opportunity. It's been, like I said, it's been great being here. It's it's incredible how many amenities there are. Um, you know, there are definitely uh, needs in the community as far as maybe some improvements or some new facilities that maybe certain villages don't have some of the amenities. Um, but it's really been a, it's a it's a great opportunity. It's a great opportunity for CNMI. Um, this is a funding mechanism that has significant funds um, to put towards open space and recreation, um, you know, and, and recreation facilities. So, you know, please come to the website, visit, and do our survey online because it's the it's the feedback that we get from the community that's going to drive our implementation program. It's going to drive how we develop the goals, actions, and, and, and strategies. So. Thank you. And if people have questions also, they can contact us through the Facebook page. And Give it um, to the, us one more time, so please. So it's CNMI SCORP, which is S-C-O-R-P. And also on Facebook the same. Yeah, that's the Facebook page. And then um, the website is cnmi-scorp.com. All right. Well, our guests today have been Craig Pereira of Horsley Witten Group and also Becky Skeel Jordan of COA Consulting, working with the CNMI government on the CNMI statewide comprehensive outdoor recreation plan. They want to have your thoughts, so um, check them out on Facebook. This has been Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Catherine Perry. This program was supported by a We the People grant 
awarded to the Northern Marianas Humanities Council from the National Endowment for the Humanities. Any views, findings, conclusions, or recommendations expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily represent those of the National Endowment for the Humanities or the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Thank you.